This is one of the most beautiful cars I've ever seen. I'm gonna die! <laughs> He's not gonna die. It's fine. It's fine. Stop whining. Hi, I'm Dennis Gage. Thanks for tuning in to My Classic Car, home of the Certified Car Nut. Well, this week we're in Hamilton, Ohio to visit with my good buddy Scott Whitaker. Now, some of you may know Scott as the creator of the Dynamat sound deadening material, but Scott's also a designer, builder, and a hardcore car guy. Today we're going to look at a couple of his creations, the fabulous Dynasport and the somewhat gnarlier Dynaliner. But in my book, they're both just plain dynamite. Check them out. Hey Scott, how you doing man? Very good. Good Thanks to see you. Dennis. Always good to see you and your cars. I, I love what you build and you build such wild stuff. This, this is your Dynaliner 32 Coupe. But this, which looks like, uh, you know, a, I don't know, 50 year old Bonneville car. But this car is how old? Three years old. Three years old. <laughs> so you made it to look this way, which, which I think is amazing. It's a Brookville body? It's a Brookville Coupe? Yeah, it's a, right? It was a brand new steel Brookville three window coupe, which they make a reproduction uh, several reproduction mm -hmm. Ford bodies. So what did you put it on for a frame? Is that 30, a 32 frame? 32 rails, all custom cross members. The rail is kicked up at mm -hmm. the firewall, pinched severely, kicked up in back, uh, try to get that tall axle under there. You've done a lot of period look on stuff. I mean, the, the, the brakes look period, but they've also, they look kind of modified. They are both. Uh, they're reproduction 40 Ford brakes. A couple of young, talented guys that work for me that worked on this car, uh, I let them loose on several parts of it. That, and they came up with that look? Yeah, and uh, he, he cut the, the cutouts on there. We had some perforated metal sitting around that uh, uh, he put in there to keep the gravel out. And he gave it that, out. that look. I mean, and, awesome. and gave it that look. And, and same for the grill, because I'm looking at this grill going, that, I recognize it, but I don't recognize it. It's it, a yeah. It, well, it's a, a little bit of familiar and a little bit of uh, made up. It's it's actually a hemisphere, like a spun half of a ball. Yeah. Then cut in half, so you got the top and the bottom of um, when you split it with some radius panels that give you the um, sides. These are 32 Ford grill teeth. And with a crank hole, it looks pretty authentic, like it came off of somebody's <laughs> you track. Had go, you had to go find a crank hole for yeah, it, right? <laughs> yeah, but the inspiration really was like a Miller grill. Yeah, you know? yeah well, and that's what it, you've got that, that race look. Yeah. But the Brookfields don't come this chopped. You had to chop it this No, they, they, they come a stock height, uh, and uh, we chopped it. But one of the things here, we did lean it back a little bit, uh -huh. which for Bonneville makes sense. Yeah, because you got uh, some more aerodynamics. Because the 32 windshield's pretty upright. And your louvered uh, cover here, I think that looks great. Yeah, it's uh, the insert that you, is, is just a big hole there actually in a 32 and, and uh, a lot of street rotters would put a flat piece of metal, but this is actually a removable panel. Mega uh, sunroof. Makes a great sunroof. <laughs> um, it can be done open or closed. And same back here with the, the louvered trunk, a great look there. Yeah, yeah the trunk is a regular trunk really with a panel over it. Looks like it has six quarter turn fasteners which keep it down but it's just the two bottom ones there and uh so it just completes the look really yeah so you've got your you know for cross country trips you've got your gasoline and your water with you and a six volt system no it, it looks like a six volt battery this is really a 12 volt battery it's ford script it, it looks very authentic well, let's look at your 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 interior which i'm sure is equally luxurious okay i mean after of, all it's a bonneville car you course, know they were of course they were always loaded up with interior well you drive across country you know you got to make sure you have all the creature comforts. that's right <laughs> and you do you take this baby you drove this thing to uh, vegas right absolutely bomber seats mismatched bomber seats most guys don't want one because they're they want to have two that match in their car so and, and it, was, you it was easier to come by two that don't match <laughs> and ludwig uh, uh bass drum yep, pedal bass drum pedal What's your speedo? That's a it's, mega speedo. It's a, it's a neat cluster. It comes out of a Mack truck. <laughs> uh, I think it's a neat looking piece. I like the fan. I like the vacuum gauge. Again, creature comforts, right? Yeah, yeah. So let's let's have a look at the engine. All right. Flathead, of course. Flathead. Ford's finest. A little bit of souping up. Um, it actually has um, a like supercharger a on it. Yeah. Yeah. It's Is that a, a period? That's a Scott. That's or a, a Scott. It's it's a, actually an Atal Mechanica, which is a predecessor but, to uh -huh. the Scott. Same company, basically. Vintage Hildebrand. How about the heads, though? Well, the heads are brand new, sharp heads. In fact, they were kind of polished. <laughs> <laughs> it took care of that, though, and, didn't uh, it? <laughs> yeah. Well, the, the, uh, every metal takes a different acid to oxidize it, to, which 
obviously makes it look old. And mm -hmm. so w you just have to have the right one for the right metal. It's steel, aluminum, and, and copper, and brass all take a different one. So you just you just antique them up and they look? Yeah. Your, your, your carbs, though, they're, what are those? The Strombergs, right? Yeah, the, those are brand new Strombergs. How about the air cleaner? I like, that's cool. The, the teardrop aluminum piece is, a, is really a candy dish from a discount store. <laughs> Uh, I, Another found item? Found item. Well, this, this baby runs great. You drove it all the way from Cincinnati to Las Vegas um, and, and back, I'm assuming. Yeah. But, you know, can, we, can we drive it around today? Absolutely. Can I drive Love it around to. today? I, absolutely. Close Let's do up. it. Let's fire this baby up. This is a hot rod, and this drives like a hot rod. Yeah. How long did it take you to build this one? This was a pretty quick build. This this was really uh, a nine-month build. And did you do the chop in your shop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, laid uh, the windshield back just a bit? Yeah. I've never been in something this squashed, yeah. this chopped. You've, you've got to be okay with not seeing what's happening above you. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, you get used to it, you really do. So of course you've got Dynamat throughout this thing, or we wouldn't be hearing each other right yes. now, right? Yes, yes. Uh, it would be unbearable without <laughs> Dynamat. You gotta figure out where all the levers are on this, Scott. Flip, 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 drive, pull, <laughs> spin. It's a high-tech car. <laughs> you have to be ambidextrous to drive this thing. It's amazing, and these are Tremec five-speeds, right? Yes. What a nice transmission to put in something like this. Yeah, and in fact, it's this is a perfect transmission for a, a flathead. The flathead's so torquey. Man, that was a blast. I'm that glad you enjoyed it. Dying Lighter is, it runs great and it's surprisingly quiet. Yeah, well, that's what I do. That is what you do, less, less noise, right? <laughs> but you know, you made that car almost to look gnarly, to look nasty, but you made this car to look fabulous. And, and, and Scott, I gotta tell you, this is one of the most beautiful cars I've ever seen. When I saw this car first time, it stopped me in my tracks. Well, that means a lot to me, oh, coming from you especially. It's just beautiful. Now, this is another one that, I mean, you created this thing kind of, you know, to be different and, and, and out of your, your head, but it's another Brookville body, right? Yes, it's a Brookville Roadster, and except for the wheel wells from here back, it's a stock Roadster. But you've done a lot of wild and innovative things. I mean, that 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 front end suspension to begin with. I mean, what what is that? That's a cantilevered or? There are cantilevered. There's twin quarter elliptics out at each frame rail, and that comes from mid century motorsports inspired thirty two. So mm -hmm. and then wild job on the on, on the wishbones here. Because with these big tires, and I even felt it on the coupe, you don't have a heck of a turning radius before you no, bang into no, those. That's, but that's, you've dished these in. It's form follows function. And this is at its finest, I think. Radiusing those means you get more turning radius, mm -hmm. but it also looks beautiful. Oh, it's it fabulous. Just, it just goes with the car. And on this side, we have to radius the uh, drag link, which is a, a feat in itself to make sure that that doesn't um, you know, bend because yeah. now it's not as strong. Yeah, yeah. So there's a, some techniques on doing that. That's a little, it's not just a tube. Well then, you know, the color scheme on this, because you, you initially go, oh, it's, it's black, black, white, and, and a green stripe in there. But this isn't black. This is like a deep, deep emerald green. Right. It's, it's actually a uh, new paint color called uh, jade black. It's so green, it's black. Yeah, that's, so, that's how green it is. Yeah, so, so we call it snot black. <laughs> it's, it's not black. Yeah, because it's, not, it's black. not black. Your hinges, too, I think are a nice detail. Did you have to do something special to that? Or they... Just polish them. Most people paint them or chrome plate them. I think or, look... or a lot of guys don't cut them off and put a hidden hinge. They look uh, great polished, though. Oh, it's that with the copper rivets on the, yeah. and the aluminum on the car, it kind of just goes with everything. The uh, little windscreens? Brooklyn's aero screens, like on British racing cars. But this, I mean, is this Ferrari? Here? Ferrari steering wheel. Everything's, you know, there's a lot of mid 50 sports car stuff going on here, yeah. you know, and it, it, trying to be convincing and true to the car. 
um, that kind of stuff works. Triumph TR3 dashboard. It, you know, I was wondering if that wasn't Triumph. What's the yeah. center button though? The center knob. Now, that... the, uh, well, you know, these these knobs are Porsche and Volkswagen. In fact, this is where a choke pull might be on a British car, but it's a Volkswagen heater knob, <laughs> and it's the ignition key. <laughs> I like that. How about the seats? Porsche 356 GT oh, yeah. uh, without the upholstery. Yeah. And you, you put these little pads in, you got all the holes there for, for weight, and that's for comfort? Yeah, they look like racing seats, if anything. In fact, you saw the bomber seats in the other car. The uh, Everybody who has bomber seats drools over these. And, yeah. and nobody, it, the Porsche guys and the hot rod guys want these. the Porsche guys want these too, I bet. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, how about the, you know, I mean, the fairing. The, it's just, this to me makes the car, I think. It gives you that really racy look. And your wheels are incredible. I mean, these, first of all, these things are huge. And I, I mean, th that's a spoke pattern that I don't think I've ever seen. Yeah, it's kind of reminiscent, again, back to the mid-century motorsports, kind of like an Indy car look. Yeah. Um, and is it, are they stainless? It's raw stainless, so I don't have to clean. I'm wow. fairly practical, driving my cars a lot. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm, I'm fairly practical about how the car goes together. I don't like polishing spokes, and I don't want to see chrome peeling, which is where they usually start. Sure, sure. You did the same thing on the tail lights as... as uh... Yeah, World War II uh, wing lights, very flush. These are just polished aluminum. You know, those look so, you know, raw, and these look so, so nice. So refined, raw yeah. and refined. That's actually the... That's raw, this is refined. And I'll bet there's no flathead in this. No, no flathead, but again, trying to take new things and make them appear to be truly vintage. Uh -huh. You know, the engine had to have the same kind of treatment. Yeah. And, and I really, I hate to tell anybody what this is. I, I'd rather show it to you because it's it's kind of misleading if I tell you. Uh, of course, it's misleading if I show you. <laughs> Continental Mark II. Yeah, there's a 56 Mark II valve covers, and they actually are the valve covers. 70 Mercedes air cleaner, uh -huh. with which uh, I made this stainless wire and uh, bronze wool filter. But it's a, it started out as a 302 Ford motor. It looks like the the distributors in the back, like the Lincoln would be. Yeah. But it the, it's just long plug wires that go and to the distributor in front. Yeah, the distributors <laughs> in front. It's Crazy. punched out to 347. It's 400 horsepower. Oh man. Um, and and just in about 400 foot pounds of torque. With those little tires, it's got to be it's got to be a handful. Yeah, it is. Fortunately, those tires are pretty sticky. Um, but they're not sticky enough for this uh, <laughs> to, to keep it under control. Well, you know, the Dyna Liner was a blast to drive, but this has got to be just just phenomenal. Can we take this it's out? It's exciting. It's exciting. And exhilarating. <laughs> well, let's, let's get excited. Okay, I can't Can wait. I drive it again? Absolutely. Oh, all right. Let's do it. Close her up. down in this thing, don't you? Get down and get funky. <laughs> get down and get funky. Well, what kind of reaction do you find to this car? Because this thing is a little bit out there. It's a mixed bag, really, because with the transmission, the motor, the drive line, the rear end, it's, it's got some supercar qualities, you know? I mean, this uh -huh. car will just fly, but still it comes across as being very vintage. If I was gonna build the same car everybody else builds, I, I wouldn't. Yeah. I really wouldn't. I didn't want a cookie cutter car. Well, I tell you, that this sure isn't a cookie cutter car. No. It's just a um, classy, mid-century styled uh, sports car. You know, it's... Yeah, that's a, that's a good description of it, because it really is kind of a... It's as much a sports car as it is a hot rod. Yeah, yeah. I think the people who really get it are the people who really dig cars, no matter what they are. I'll say. And I just thought, you know, nobody's really done a car quite like that, a real nice sports car. And I was always into sports cars as well. It's so, a little Triumph Dash and everything. Yeah, there. yeah I mean, you got I, a lot of sports car I, flair in I this. love your European sports cars. When did you start building cars? Well, it just kind of developed as a pent-up desire. <laughs> I started doing BMW stuff back long, long ago. 
uh, like in the 70s. I mean, nobody was doing, nobody even knew what BMW was but in the 70s. I know. <laughs> that was a nice little autocross car that can actually, if you set it up right, can wax a guy in a Porsche who doesn't know what he's doing. <laughs> So until our next meeting, remember, honor the timeless classics. I'm Dennis Gage. Happy motoring.